Well, guess what? After patiently waiting, I finally have enough tomatoes here to do a little canning. So today I'm gonna to take you along as I can some pizza sauce. That's something that we eat a lot of in our house. And so I'm going to start first with that. And if we have a few left over, I will probably can some salsa, but I hope you'll stay tuned. the deal I have the canner going getting ready to water bath can our pizza sauce and we will be using water bath canning for this that is the method that is required for canning your uh, pizza sauces tomato sauces salsa because your tomatoes have enough acid and you actually need very acidic food to be able to water bath can so that's why we had this going on in the background it gets a little loud so I'll try to speak up and that way maybe we won't have any issues with volume we have an issue with lighting, I see. I keep getting brighter and darker, but hopefully you'll be able to see. But we're gonna need 13 cups of tomatoes. And so I'm gonna use a variety of Roma tomatoes and then the plum tomatoes. That's just what I happen to have on hand. I went ahead and quartered some of the tomatoes uh, because my garden is producing a little bit at a time. They were just starting to turn last week, so I grabbed the ones that had turned and then I waited till this week and ran out this morning and got another three to four pounds of them. So we'll go ahead and get the rest of them quartered and then we're gonna turn that into tomato puree. Okay, I realized that I failed to tell you why I quartered my tomatoes and that's because I have a tomato strainer or some people uh, refer to them as tomato meals and that will allow me to go ahead and uh, remove the peel, the core, um, all of that with the strainer. So if you do not have a tomato meal or a tomato strainer, you can still do this. All you'll need to do is blanch your tomatoes and then you'll need to peel the skins off of them, uh, core them, get the seeds out and let them hang out in a colander for about 15 minutes, drain all the liquid out and then you can just puree them from that point. So you don't have to have that machine um, to be able to do this step. A lot of times I'll go ahead and just pop the, the core out with my knife if I feel like I can get to it pretty easily and that's just, I don't know. I probably don't even need to do that with my tomato strainer. That's probably a, a step that I could skip, but I don't know. I just feel like it just makes me happy, I guess. to me now what a messy messy job this is but I went ahead and set up my tomato strainer and this is the I think you pronounce it Cucina Pro tomato strainer this is a picture of the box and I'll link it down below if you'd like to purchase it for yourself this is only my second year using the tomato strainer my neighbor actually recommended it last year after I was telling him about my struggles making salsa and how hard it was to get the tomatoes prepped. And so I do appreciate being able to have this um, added accessory in my kitchen. Uh, so you see on this side, the tomatoes come out into the bowl. And this is the side that releases your peeling, your cores, um, your seeds. This is really the pulp or the meat um, as you might would say of your tomato and then on the other side you have your juice tray So once you load the top with your quartered tomatoes All you have to do is just turn this handle right here and that will start the grinding process Which will go ahead and press those tomatoes out and create the juice in the opposite tray on the other side Okay, here's a different view and this might be a little better so you can see everything I'm going ahead and getting the top loaded and it is a little bit of a messy process so I thought I would cut the video short and be able to put my camera away for a little bit while I go ahead and use this if not it sprays tomato all over the kitchen and it will get 
on my tripod and everything. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of the idea, um, but you'll get it. Just put your tomatoes in, start turning the handle, and the magic will happen. The strainer does come with a tool that you can use to push your tomatoes down into the grinding part there. And that just makes it a little bit easier just to start pushing them through. Uh, once you get it going though, it's pretty quick and easy. And aside from the mess, I would highly recommend this product. So if you can a lot of tomatoes, make sauces, uh, make juices, make, you know, sauces, sauces and sauces, um, this would be a great tool to add to your kitchen. So I made a little change up. What I decided to do, this was actually the tomato juice that was coming out of this side. So this was the drain tray um, for the juice. And then really your pulp was coming out right here, the seeds, the peeling and all. And what I've done in the past is I've used this juice to make salsa with. And then I haven't had a lot to do with this part, which is my discard. So after really thinking about it and doing a little research, uh, because I did decide this time to leave the peeling on my quarter tomatoes before I put them in the tomato strainer. Now you can do it either way. And it said everything I read said it, you could skip that step. So I thought, well, it's a lot of trouble to peel the tomatoes. So let's just try it this time and see if skipping that step is okay to do you know here on out and i did i skipped the step i put everything in the food processor that came out on the pulp side and i processed it and this is what i got so you cannot tell that there was peeling in here i mean it blended into our tomatoes and if i if i do happen to see a, a peel i'll pull that out but i don't see anything yet the only thing that you have on this uh, part of the discard is that, or I shouldn't say discard because this is very much usable tomatoes, but the only thing that you really have with this, um, with these tomatoes is that you're going to have more seeds. So I was going to use this for the pizza sauce because of the thickness, but I think I'm going to change it up. I think I'm going to use this one for the salsa because I'm okay if I have seeds, a few seeds in my salsa i'd rather it be there than in the tomato sauce and then in the tomato sauce i'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste to the recipe and see if i can thicken that sauce up this is the texture that it is right now so it's actually a good thickness i mean it's not like well you couldn't even see that could you um it's not like complete liquid it actually has some thickness to it so I think that we could use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and that's what I'm gonna do and hopefully that won't be a huge mistake. But if it is, if we are able to do this, that means that not only was I able to get the pizza sauce out of these tomatoes, but I was also able to get the salsa and I will have zero discard. And that makes me very happy. So we'll see if we can get that to work right now. We have, this is 14 cups, I measured out 14 cups um, of tomato puree and our recipe called for about 13 cups. And then this, uh, for the salsa recipe that I'm gonna use, we need, I think 11 cups. So we'll see if we can get 11 cups out of that. a brand new day we had a lot going on yesterday afternoon I was getting ready to just move forward and process everything but I actually had one of my kids 
um, struggling with a stomach bug, what we think it is. So that kind of changed my plans yesterday. That's okay. That's life. That's just what happens. And so I'm picking up where I left off this morning. I told you, I think I told you at the end of the last video that I decided to go with this one. It's a more smooth uh, puree for our tomatoes versus the one that was more of like the pulp in it. I've decided I'm gonna use that for the salsa. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. It's got to cook on the stove for a little bit more than two hours. So that will give us time to get some other things done and maybe even start on our salsa. I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna show you the pizza sauce and the salsa in the same video. And I realized I kept saying tomato sauce. I'm not making tomato sauce, I'm making pizza sauce. <laughs> so let me just make that clear. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if that's too much to do the, both the salsa and the pizza sauce. I might just go ahead and do that anyway because it actually will help me out so I can just process one time and pull out the canner one time and be done with it. I think also in everything that was going on yesterday, I forgot to tell you about my memories from canning tomatoes uh, with my granny especially. She would come over here, my granny and I were super close. She's gone on to be with the Lord now, but she would come over uh, several times during the week, during the summer, and she would help me get everything out of the garden and process it. And so one of the sweetest memories that I have with her is our prepping vegetables and, and making soup and making things. And she would help me with the tomatoes because she knew I absolutely hated that job. And that was before I had the strainer, which does make it easier. Um, it is a little bit messier, or maybe not. Maybe I'm just forgetting about all the messes <laughs> that we made. But um, it was just, you know, a process. I remember having to like boil the tomatoes till that skin started to crack and then get them out and put them in cold water and try to get that the skin peeled off of them. But uh, every time the inside of the tomato was so hot that it would burn your fingers. But she was my buddy through all that and she would help me uh, do that whole process, peeling them, cutting them up and getting them ready to go. And then I would take it from there with the pizza sauce and the salsa. She didn't really want to have any of that part, but she liked uh, getting everything prepped and ready to go. So I'm gonna pop up a picture of her helping me. And it's one of my favorite pictures that I have of her because it truly showcases her in one of my aprons and her sweet little pearls um, because that was her. She was classy and she was tough. She didn't mind getting her hands dirty and she was the hardest worker that I ever, I guess I've ever known. So I just wanted to share that. Just some memories that I have in the kitchen. Okay, we've added about six tablespoons of olive oil to our stock pot. And to that, we are going to add in, it was four cloves of minced garlic. This recipe also calls for, okay, recipe also calls for um, three cups of minced onions, if you wanna add that. But I'm going to, um, I'm gonna opt out of that because my husband doesn't like onions in anything. And I'll probably just add minced onion, or not minced onion, I'm sorry, like an onion powder to my sauce. And then that way that will give it that onion flavor. And we're gonna let that cook until, well, it says until it's translucent, but that was more for the onion. So we'll just let that cook until that garlic is cooked a little and get a little bit toasty, but not too much. That garlic really doesn't need long to cook there. You do not want to burn it. So continue to you know stir it constantly as it's cooking. But I think it's at a good point right there. So we are going to now add our tomatoes. Stir it in. Okay, and to our mixture there with our tomato puree, we're going to add in two teaspoons of pepper, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of oregano, four tablespoons of parsley. And I, this was supposed to be fresh parsley, but I only had dried. So I just cut that four tablespoons by a little bit because I know that the dried parsley tends to be a little bit, bit more potent. And then we've got two um, tablespoons of basil. And I'm gonna add in some Italian seasoning. 
If you had rosemary, you could add that to it as well. We have fresh rosemary, and I'm just, I don't know if I want to add the fresh rosemary just yet. I'm going to think about that. But I'm going to get that Italian seasoning in there. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of sea salt. I'm going to use my Himalayan pink salt just because that's what I have on hand. So, two tablespoons of, or I'm sorry, two teaspoons of that. And don't try to, don't think you have to try to remember this recipe. I'm going to have it uh, linked for you down below in the description. Just going to get that stirred in. We're going to bring this mixture to a boil and then we will turn it down a little and let it simmer for a couple of hours. Okay, the beginning of our pizza sauce is coming to a boil. So we're gonna reduce our heat down to medium low and we'll let that simmer for a couple hours. I'll stir it occasionally, um, but it should reduce a little bit and cause it to thicken up. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wait about an hour and see how thick um, the sauce is getting. And then I'll decide from there whether or not I wanna add a tomato paste or just leave it like it is. So while the pizza sauce is going, I had planned to go ahead and get started on the salsa. And then I realized that I need my pot to make the pizza, uh, to make the salsa, to prep the salsa in. So I'm gonna have to wait on that. But I thought while I wait, I would um, take a minute to tell you about uh, what you can do with these salsa packets. This is Mrs. Wage's salsa that we're gonna use. I will link all this below. Um, and I ripped open the top in, in anticipation of using it just now. So I'll just close that up for uh, a little while later. But these don't, if you buy them, um, like this one I've had for a couple of years. This one says best buy 10, 30, 22. So that we've got time to use it this year. But I noticed that the kosher deal mix that I had purchased this year for the pickles is good until 2024. So a good idea is to go ahead and stock up on the salsa, the dill pickle mix, um, whatever that you like um, from Mrs. Wages when you can find it because a lot of times it's hard to find during canning season, which that's the problem that I ran into last year. And I was glad that I already had some that I had bought it the year before. So this is actually leftover. I wasn't, I told you I wasn't planning on doing salsa this year. We've got actually a little bit more uh, to carry us through the year or I, I was thinking maybe I would can a little bit, just not a lot like I did last year. But because I had this on hand, I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of the tomato puree to do that. So that's just a tip for you. If you find it, go ahead and buy it and you can keep it on your shelf until the next canning season. So for now, I've decided to take a break and drink me some coffee in my little chicken mug. Look at that, isn't that adorable? I found that the other day. Not that I need another coffee mug, but I just so cute. I got that at Tractor Supply if you're interested. Run down to Tractor Supply and get you one. And look, it's got, this is our sweet little Rhode Island red on there. And then this is a barred rock. And that's, we're going to have a barred rock in our brood. So, I thought that was so cool. Okay, so it's been about an hour. It's been a little bit more than an hour, actually. And this is the consistency of our pizza sauce right now. You can see it started about right there, that it's cooked down a little bit but it's not really getting the thickness to it that I would like for it to have. So I am gonna go ahead and add tomato paste to it and just see if that's gonna help it. All right, I went ahead and added our tomato paste and it's already starting to thicken up a little bit more. So I think that was a good decision. We're gonna let it cook on a low simmer for an additional probably 45 minutes. We'll come back and check it. But it is beginning to smell like pizza in here is what Alex said. It definitely smells good. All right, just to show you where we are, our pizza sauce is ready to get into the jars. And I have the jars in the canner already right next door. Get a glove to get this open so you can see. Ooh, steamed up my lens. But they are in there and they are sanitizing and getting ready and getting heated so that we can fill those with our pizza sauce. All right, we're ready to fill our jars. So we've got our heated jars here, our pot of pizza sauce, 
And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add lemon juice into each of our jars, about a tablespoon in each jar. And this is just to lower the pH and add a little bit of acidity. And we do that because we are water bath canning. So we wanna make sure that our product is very acidic. That's what makes it safe to water bath can. So that's why we're adding the lemon juice. And I'm using this Santa Cruz, but you can use whatever lemon juice you prefer. Shake it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna add a little bit to each jar. Like I said, about a tablespoon. We'll eyeball it. All right, now for the fun part. And we're gonna fill each jar up to about one half inch from the top. We'll give it a little head space there. here to catch drips. I have stained this drying pad quite a bit with pickles. I don't really know if I could ever cook or can or do anything productive without making a mess. I'm sure my family would agree to that statement. If I get a little bit closer. Aha! Mm -hmm. six or seven that would have been nice because I've calculated that we use about 24 jars of pizza sauce in a year and that is if we have if we do homemade pizzas twice a month so that being said we would have to do this process I was thinking we'd have to do this process four times to get what we needed for a year supply but we might have to do it more like five times so I don't know if that's realistic at this point. I guess we'll have to see if our tomatoes keep producing. I could probably do this one more time um, unless I, you know, go buy tomatoes and supplement. So, and we'll go ahead and can these. They will process for about 25 minutes. to make and can some salsa. Here are our pureed tomatoes from yesterday. And this was the pulp side of the tomato that came out. It had a lot of the peeling in it, if you remember, and seeds. And so I went ahead and pureed this in our food processor. And this is what we ended up with. And I'm just as pleased as I can be that I got not only pizza sauce, but salsa out of these, I think it was nine to 12 pounds of Roma and plum tomatoes. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, so to our pot, we're gonna add our tomatoes. We have our heat on medium right now, and we will turn that up when we get everything in so that that can come to a boil. To this, we're gonna add a half cup of white distilled vinegar. Now you can also use cider vinegar if that's what you have. Either one will work. Maybe a slight flavor difference. I really can't remember. And then to that, we'll also add our packet of Mrs. Wages. Okay, 
and we're going to get this stirred in. Let that come to a boil. Then we will turn it down and it simmers for 10 minutes. And then, believe it or not, it is ready to jar at that point. Very, very easy method of making salsa. Oh, and this is the medium Mrs. Wages, which has enough heat for me. Um, there's also a mild and a hot version. And I always opt for the medium because I think it's a, it's a happy medium. It's a good in-between the two. It adds just enough heat not to, you know, make your eyes water. So um, that's, that's the kind that we use, but of course that is your preference. I used to make my own salsa, you know, homemade salsa and, and chop all the, the vegetables up and everything. And then one day I tasted salsa that um, a friend of mine's mom had made and it was so amazing and I said oh my goodness I've got to have her recipe what's your secret Mrs. Wages that was her secret so I tried it the next year and after that I was hooked because it was better than what I was making and taking so much time in preparing so that is what I I have done you know there on out and will continue to do all right looks like we've got a boil going on so go ahead and turn that down to a medium low. We'll let it simmer for 10 minutes. And then it should be good to go. This is gonna be a chunkier salsa than I have made in years past. So there, there'll be a little bit of difference there, but I, you know, I like a little bit of a chunkier salsa, so I'm good with that. Y'all know that's my favorite sound. myself again I thought I would just let you see the footage but I'm basically doing the same thing I did with the pizza sauce as far as this canning process just filling it to about half inch from the top and giving it a little head space and then we're just going to clean the tops down uh, make sure we have all the residue off so that our lids will get a good seal and we'll go ahead and get all of those on and then add our rings and they'll be ready to go into the canner. And though we only got six pint jars of salsa out of these tomatoes, that still um, makes me pretty happy because I know that this will carry us for a good while. Um, this should show you just how many tomatoes you really need to grow in order to can pints and pints of salsa and pizza sauce and the good thing is that my tomatoes are just starting to come in. They just started to turn uh, last week. In fact, today as I'm editing this, I have got a whole garden full of tomatoes that need to be picked. So I'll probably be doing this all over again next week and I couldn't be happier about that. So I'll keep you posted on Instagram. You can tune in over there and see my day-to-day -day life and you'll see uh, how the, ar the harvest goes this coming week but I'm hoping that I can get a lot more because we would love to have more pizza sauce on our shelves. So we're gonna go ahead and get these jars in our canner and we'll have those process for about 10 minutes. And once that water starts boiling, I'll go ahead and get them lowered into the water and let them do their thing. It's a good idea to let your jars stay on the little cooling rack after you lift them out of the canner for about five minutes before you transfer them to your towel. This just allows them to cool a little bit and to uh, stop the boiling process before you move them. You don't really want to disturb uh, what's going on there. 
so I try to let them, I try to be patient and let them hang out for about five minutes. It's such a wonderful feeling to be able to can and preserve uh, what you get out of the garden and I love um, to learn more and more about this subject, this topic. So if you have anything to add, any suggestions, or if you have any questions, make sure you leave me a comment down below. I'll be happy to try and answer. And if not, we'll work together and try to find answers to your questions. So if you are canning tomatoes this year or making sauces and sauces, you'll have to let me know how it's going for you. Are you having a good harvest? How are things going where you live? Well, it has been a long day, but we are finally finished with our tomato processing. So in the end, we ended up with six half pint jars of salsa and five half pint jars of pizza sauce. And that's a good start on the pizza sauce. Hopefully I can can some more tomatoes and get some more pizza sauce uh, to last us for a little bit more than, um, let's see, that would be based on how often we eat pizza, uh, homemade pizzas, that would be about two and a half months. So um, we'll get a few more of those jars, hopefully. And then I just pulled this bread out of the oven that I'm looking forward to slicing. You will see a video of it coming very soon. I'll make another loaf and I'll just film the whole process for you. But this is a sourdough bread. So this is out of our sourdough starter. But I plan to make a video showing you how to make sourdough bread and also how to make regular um, loaf bread if you do not have a sourdough starter. So be looking for those. Um, they should be coming up soon. I am so glad that you took the time out of your schedule today to join me in the kitchen as I did a little canning. I hope that you are enjoying these videos. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. It would also mean so much to me if you would hit that like button, just so I know you are enjoying these videos and you want to see more. So until next time, remember to live simply, use what you have, and enjoy the moments you've been given. Bye friends!